שומר הצעירי זה Youth Movement, was established 100 years ago, at 1913 in Galicia, in Poland, as the first Zionist Jewish movement. It means that it was uh, only for, uh, it was a solution for Jewish kids that didn't have where to go in Europe. Uh, it was a secular, the first, first secular movement. It means that most of the Jewish at that time in Europe are orthodox. It means that they are not doing anything beside of sitting in the room and study the Bible. And it was the first secular Uh, movement uh, with the solution for Jewish and it was a socialist movement from from day one um, it have a lot of stream in it like a communist stream anarchist people in that but it was a socialist movement um, with the wanting to go to Israel one day um, We were wearing the blue shirt, like the uh, working class, and we're educating for uh, Zionism, uh, solidarity between nation and uh, socialism. Um, today we're in Israel, and we have around uh, 10,000 members in the movement, and we have also adult movement. It means that people in the age of 20 and older than that, are living together in communes, sharing money, study together, shaping their life together, living in a socialist uh, structure and not as individual in the society. It's very, I mean, we're starting very light if they're young and then we're become uh, more and more uh, out loud with, with what we believe, like saying socialism, I don't think we will say it in the first workshop with 10 years old. So I think what we will do is uh, to sit together in a circle and to, uh, uh, to learn together how to listen to everybody or if you're getting your food at the summer camps or you wait for everybody to get their own food. I mean, you're learning very basic things about sharing and being in solidarity and not only for yourself. And after a while, when you're evaluating with the kids, so you can call it socialism. But first you're giving them the tools about how to share or how to not discriminate or to be in equality. And then you're giving that the name. We have like the three main values, which is solidarity between nations. For us it's important, we live in, in a country with a conflict, a very divided society, and it's important for us to be pro-peace. It means that we are not interested in only in our interests, but we also want to unite people or to create a situation where everybody can live in her or his identity, which is important. And we have like comrades all around the world that we also want like workers of the world unite. It's also part of solidarity between nations. And we have the Zionism, which I think is unique and very different from other socialist movement. And I think it's very connecting to the fact that we're Jewish on the one hand and socialist on the other hand. And together we combine it and we, we're doing this thing that's called Zionism. It means the Jewish people are in Israel in a very geographical place, but, but it means like a social thing. I mean, if we're imagining the uh, Israel, like in my, in my dreams, so the Zionist, the Zionist dream will say uh, it will be a welfare country with coexistence. I mean, two nations live uh, next to each other in solidarity and equality for women. And this is how we see Zionism, but we're not separating that from the fact that we're socialist. 
And I think for us it's important to be under the definition of Israeli people, Jewish people. I mean, we're not canceling that by being socialist. I think, first of all, I would say about us that we don't call ourselves organization. We're a movement, and I think it's a bit different. Maybe it's more committed in the daily life than organization, and I think it's maybe bigger, or the structure is just very different between a movement to an organization. And I think in the end of the day, we want to educate the society as soon as we can. It's it's better for us. And I think to do like an instant revolution or only a direct action, uh, it can leave people without the tool how to live in a socialist society that we want it to be socialist even after we are, I don't know, destroying capitalism. So I don't want to leave my socialist value. I want people to have the tool how to live in a social way. And I think we need to educate for that. And the sooner, the better. And we have uh, a sentence by Martin Buber say, the youth is uh, the biggest chance of humanity. And I think it's true. I mean, they have the power to impact, to reshape all the time. They're not adults. They don't have a fixed opinion. They're just, you know, checking the world, looking for themselves. And it's important to be in a discussion with the kids and youth about life, what life can be in the age where they're still shaping themselves and their environment. I think uh, Herzl, he was the one that uh, thought about the idea of Zionism, so I think he's an important figure for us. And uh, Mordechai Nilevich, which was the, the leader of, uh, of the ghetto Warsaw uprising, he wasn't alone, there was a lot of people with him. Uh, and I think for me it's important to say that history is uh, mainly about men that are important. And I, I, I know there's also women that were important for us, but at in, in the same time, there weren't a lot of women that did things because they didn't know they have the power. So I can say a lot of uh, men names, but there's also women that did a lot of uh, important things, especially during the Holocaust, women that were, um, you know, they were like running away from the ghetto to the Aryan parts. I did some um, work of getting information about the, the Nazi regime and thought about how they can save the Jewish people in the war. And I think it's very, for us, it's important as a movement because we're saying that uh, no matter what is the reality or what is the situation, as a person, you always can choose what you want to do to rebel uh, the reality and to, and to act, to do an action. And it's very important for us as a movement to learn from the story of the Second World War. Uh, and Martin Buber is one of the biggest philosophers, I think. He's creating the combination between Judaism, anarchism, socialism. For a lot of people, it's weird but he's doing it in a very, in a beautiful way and he's talking a lot about connection between people. And for us, it's very important when we're shaping our life together as a group, it's important to realize how we want to connect between us and the connection, it's not about money or that I can use you to get what I want. I don't know if we can do socialism without education because I don't think people can choose something without knowing why they're choosing it. And in the end of the day, if you don't want the revolution will um, abolish after one week, <clears throat> you need people that know what they're doing and why. <clears throat> and that they're there to, to take care of, of more generations. And I, th I think one of the biggest 
main way to do it. It's by education. And you can educate to, by, by this conversation and showing a movie, you educate people to something. So everything is education. If we're having a demonstration about racism or, or women's rights, I'm educating to take an action. It means that before the demonstration or after the demonstration, I will do a workshop about why we're doing that, what we want to say, uh, what is the message, so people can understand why they're doing things, what are the, the impact of what they're doing. They're not just marching on the street. They're doing something very important, and, and I think education is happening in a lot of uh, frames, you know, in schools, which is a very shitty education, and we want to give an alternative for that. We need to uh, do alternative education. Mm. First of all, I think it's educate you to inner um, oppression, or not even to be aware of the fact that there is oppression, and you are under oppression as a person. And uh, I think this education wants you to be one with reality without asking questions and to train you to be the best product of capitalism in the end of the day. You know, there is a lot of uh, subjects that used to be in schools and today they're not because it's not financial anymore. And, and you're killing like jobs that used to be because today the only thing you can do, I don't know, in the Israeli society, it's to work on a computer. It's the, there you can get the money, this is how you do things today, that's it. People that want to learn other things can't do that because they have the thought that they don't have a future. And when you're thinking only with the aspect of how much money I can earn, I mean, you're, you're not doing the things that you love to do as a person. Uh, to ask, I mean, you're not asking questions about your life. You don't feel that you have the power to shape your life. You know, youth today, they're raising with the thought that they have nothing to offer or nothing to say. Politi politics, it's very far away. It belongs to adult people. It's boring and they can't say anything about it. And I think the difference is in the movement that you're telling them to ask question all the time, to think in a critical way. Not everything around us is the nature of things. Things can change all the time. People are making choices and that they have to have an opinion. They cannot say, I don't know, I'm neutral. They have to have an opinion about their life. Otherwise, they will find themselves working in a job they hate, going, I don't know, to India to, for five years to understand who they are and what they want to do in their life. First of all, socialism today is not connecting to reality. The reality is not socialist. To ask people to believe and to act for something that you don't even know if it can happen, it's very hard, it's frustrating. You're going to demonstration and you see uh, not as uh, much people as you thought. Um, or you after a demonstration with the feeling that, oh my God, the revolution is here, but the day after, no one even knew about this demonstration. Or when you're going to a summer camp with 500 kids, but in the end of the day, they're going back to their capitalistic reality. It's very hard to convince people that you're doing that we are doing the right thing. And, and you know, we born and raised in a capitalistic society. If we're sitting together as a group and I'm asking people to wait for other people or to share their money, it's hurting the individual values that I got most of my life. And a lot of people don't want to live like that because they're afraid that it's going to hurt what, what they taught that you need to be on your own and to earn money. So it's very hard to bring people to this idea and to, to be like 100% positive that this is the best idea or 